The Suzuki family is a family of four living in the suburban part of Tokyo. At the beginning of our story, we see them in their small apartment. The father, Yoshiyuki Suzuki, is enjoying watching the television, while his son, Kenji, and daughter, Yui, are on their phones. We see that the family is wholly dependent on technology to keep themselves entertained, and hardly ever spend time with each other. So basically, they're no different than any other family in the world at this point. The following morning, Yoshiyuki wakes up late and sees that his alarm clock isn't working. He rushes outside and asks his wife Mitsui what time it is, only to find out none of the clocks work. Mitsui also tells him everything that runs on electricity has stopped working because of a power outage. Yui wakes up and freaks out to see the AC and the TV aren't working either. Yoshiyuki tries to call the electricity company, but even the phone is down. The father and the children quickly get dressed and head outside for work and school. They see a crowd at the elevator waiting for it to arrive, but soon find out that the power outage has halted the elevator as well. Everyone from the floor walks down the stairs, confused at the strange and sudden outage. Yoshiyuki is already late, so he rushes to the train station, but comes across a crowd again. It turns out that the outage has halted the trains, so they won't be able to travel through that until further notice. People try taking a bus as an alternative, but all electrically and fuel-powered systems are down. At the same time, we see Kenji going to school on his bicycle. The usually bustling city has no running vehicles. A confused Kenji cycles further to see everyone walking to work. Two grown-ups even eye his bicycle, jealous of the kid. When Yoshiyuki finally reaches his office, it turns out the automated front doors are shut. It is even weirder that none of their watches are working, so they do not know what time it is. After contemplating for a while, two of his colleagues break the glass door and go inside to work. But disappointment soon washes over them when they realize the computers in the office have run out of power as well. Yeah, they probably knew that. They just wanted to break some glass. Meanwhile, Mitsui meets her friends outside the apartment and discusses the power outage. Her friends rush to the store to get some candles for the night. Mitsui is confused because she believes the power will be back by night, but follows her friends anyway. At the grocery store, people stock up on food, water, and supplies. Mitsui does the same and waits in a long line to pay for the stuff. Since the machines are not working, the cashier announces they will only take cash. This way, some people get off the line to bring money out from the ATM, only to see that the ATM doesn't work either. At Yoshiyuki's office, people realize that this isn't a normal power outage, but they're still not sure what exactly is wrong. Their boss dismisses them for the day, since they cannot work without their computers. While returning home, Yoshiyuki goes to a bicycle shop. The prices of bicycles are high because of the outage, but Yoshiyuki buys one nonetheless. Huh, it's just like toilet paper during COVID. At night, the Suzuki family lights candles around the house and eats their dinner in peace. Kenji goes to the washroom, only to find that the toilet doesn't flush. At the same time, the taps stop working too. Yui is confused because the electricity outage shouldn't cause taps to malfunction. After dinner, the children go back to their room like usual, but they soon get bored without their phones and the internet. The whole family then gathers at the balcony and gazes at the sky. The dark city enhances the light coming from the stars. The family enjoys quality time together for the first time in ages, probably for the first time since the 80s. It is now the third day after the power outage. The family's apartment is in bad shape. Dirty plates pile up in the sink because of water scarcity, and dirty laundry hangs around the apartment. Without electricity, the lifestyle of the people has changed drastically in just three days. At Yoshiyuki's office that day, his senior asks everyone to stop coming to work till the power comes back. Yoshiyuki retaliates, saying if they don't work, they won't earn money, but his senior asks him to take care of his family instead. He claims that living in a city like Tokyo will be extremely difficult during such conditions because they will soon run out of food and water. Outside the office, Yoshiyuki sees his senior with his family leaving for the countryside. Yoshiyuki contemplates doing the same, but still has hope that everything will go back to normal. Later, we see Mitsui go to a nearby water tank to get water, but she, along with the crowd, is sent back because even the tank runs out of drinking water. Meanwhile, Yoshiyuki goes to the bank to withdraw some money, but returns after being shoved around by the crowd. It is now the seventh day of the power outage. All grocery stores have been wiped out of food and supplies, offices and schools have closed, and the power outage has caused all factories to shut down. More and more people are moving to the countryside, and the Suzuki family decides to do the same. The following day, they pack up their bags and leave early in the morning on their bicycles. The children ride their own, while Yoshiyuki keeps Mitsui on the back of his bicycle. They have to buy drinking water midway, but all the shops overprice it. Mitsui bargains and manages to get some at a relatively low price. They stop at a place to rest and eat for the day and immediately set off after finishing. 
Finally, they reach the airport from where they plan to take the flight to Mitsui's village, Kagoshima, where her father lives. They were told that flights were still working, but disappointment washes over them when they see a crowd outside the airport complaining to the officials. It turns out that the flights have been recently canceled and won't restart until the power comes back. With nowhere to go, the family ends up in a hotel nearby. The owner of the hotel takes advantage of their situation and charges them outrageous prices, but the family doesn't complain. At night, Yui suggests they go back home, but according to Yoshiyuki, there is no food or water left in all of Tokyo, so it is impossible to survive there. They will have to make it to Kagoshima on bicycles. The following day, Kenji and Yui go to a bookstore and get a map to navigate the locations. Meanwhile, the parents barter two bottles of Yoshiyuki's alcohol for a bicycle and some food. Then the family continues their journey. After a few hours, they finally reach a highway where several travelers like them are traveling to the countryside. At night, they stop at a camp and decide to stay there with fellow travelers. A couple sees them drinking water and asks for some, but the family lies about it being the last bottle. They eat the food and fall asleep. On the next day, they continue the journey and end up in a dark tunnel filled with corpses. They are helped by old ladies to cross it. It is now 16 days since the power outage. The family is by a river when their last bottle of water runs out. With no other way, Yoshiyuki drinks the water from the river directly. After they leave the riverside, a massive storm hits, making the family abandon their bicycles and belongings to take shelter in a nearby area. After the storm, they go back to their bikes to find that one of their tires has been destroyed. Moreover, all their clothes and food supplies are ruined as well. Soon, they reach a nearby town, and the kids go searching for food and water, leaving Yoshiyuki and Mitsui behind to rest. They are excited to find a grocery store, but see everything from the food section is gone. Kenji searches for a bicycle tire, but these are sold out as well. He then finds battery water, which is just distilled water and can be used to drink. Yui gets cat food and brings them back to her parents. She tries the cat food for the first time and finds it disgusting, but the family has to compromise to survive. Kenji fixes the tire using his phone's cover, and they continue their journey again. They survive on battery water and cat food for a week before meeting a group of campers on the 22nd day. The campers teach them about edible roadside weeds. One of them takes a picture of the family from a non-digital camera and promises to send it to them when the power comes back. They travel together for a few hours, then go their separate ways. On day 43, they arrive in front of an aquarium where the people catch fish and eat them. The family happily gets into the line, as they have limited food left now, but by their turn, everything is sold. Yoshiyuki begs the man selling the fish to give some to the kids, only to be ignored. The disappointed family moves along with the journey, but soon gets tired from lack of food and water. One day, they end up in a field, where Yoshiyuki is about to eat an insect. Just then, they see a pig nearby. The family is overjoyed when Yoshiyuki manages to catch the pig, but they are reluctant to cut it, even while starving. Just then, a man approaches them and slices the pig himself. He introduces himself as Tanaka and asks the family to help him get the pig to his farm. At his home, he treats the family with a meal. They devour it completely, having starved the past few days. For the next week, they stay with Tanaka, but then decide to continue their journey to the village again. Three days later, they end up by a river. It turns out the map they were following was old, so now they have to cross the river to get to their destination. They create a makeshift raft with pieces of wood and manage to get Mitsui and Yui to the other end. Then, Yoshiyuki and Kenji return to get the bicycles. However, just then, it starts to rain, and the water flows faster, taking Yoshiyuki with it. Kenji tries his best to save his father, but only finds his wig in the water. The family sits by the river crying, because they did not know Yoshiyuki was bald. Uh, um, mourning Yoshiyuki's death. Sometime later, they continue their journey on foot, the three make it to day 94 because of the food they had stocked up at Tanaka. They are walking along a railway track when suddenly, some dogs attack Mitsui, making her fall off the road. The kids run to save their mother, only to see that her leg is broken. They get her back on the track but are attacked by the dogs again. Just then, the noise of a steam train is heard. The family is beyond surprised when the train stops in the tracks to pick them up. Since it runs on coal, the train is still functional. People inside dress Mitsui's injuries and help the family. In the following scene, we see Yoshiyuki's body washed up by the river. Fortunately, he wakes up and manages to get himself to a nearby truck. Just then, the steam train his family is in passes by. Yoshiyuki uses a smoke torch to get the people's attention. Finally, the train stops, and the family reunites happily. The train then takes him to their destination. 
They meet Mitsui's father after years and start living with him. In the following scene, we see two years and 126 days have passed since the power outage. The Suzuki family has been living in the beautiful village of Kagoshima. They live a happy life, fishing and weaving their own clothes. One day, Yoshiyuki wakes up to an alarm clock ringing. Then, the whole village wakes up to the power coming back on. Light bulbs start to work and phones start ringing. Everyone is beyond surprised, but no one knows for sure what brought the power back. A few weeks later, the family is back to their old life in Tokyo. <laughs> that didn't take long, I guess the internet is better than grandpa. The news says that the two and a half year long outage was because of a solar flare from the sun. Some believe it was a terrorist organization's doing, but the reason is still not confirmed. The movie ends as the family receives a picture that a stranger had taken of them while they were traveling. The power outage taught people to appreciate small things in life that they took for granted. Like the Suzuki family, who didn't care about each other, was brought closer than ever because of the hardship they had to face. A world without technology. This is the scariest movie we've recapped yet. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.